Now that we know how to do this orthogonal decomposition, let's go ahead and modify some notation a little bit and see some consequences of that projection. So first of all, we're going to kind of borrow from the projection onto a vector that we did a couple of videos back. So if we can do exactly this orthogonal decomposition we discussed in the last video, we're going to call the y hat part the part that's in W, we'll call that the projection onto the subspace W of the Y vector. Just a little bit of notation sometimes makes things a little bit easier. So the first one is kind of the whole geometric reasoning behind this. The projection onto the subspace is the closest point to the vector you start with that's in the subspace. That is, and eh, we talked about the little definition there, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But here's the basic idea. Geometrically, we're starting with a vector, and we've got a subspace of Rn. Let's kind of imagine a plane. The vector's not in the plane. So what's the closest we can get to it? The closest we can get to that vector is if we've got a perpendicular to the plane and this vector right here. In terms of everything we've been talking about, this orthogonal decomposition, the vector I start with is y. The vector here that's in the plane, that's in my subspace, is my y hat or my projection of y onto w. And then this perpendicular is the Z. Okay, that makes perfect sense that if we want to get as close as possible, we know that at a right angle that's going to give us the closest distance. Yeah. So what is this norm thing I've got there? Well remember, when we're talking about distances in terms of vectors, the norm of the distance is, or the norm of the difference, is the distance between those two vectors. So what this says is, if I were to take any other vector in the plane and try and do this, try and subtract it and go there, this thing has to be longer than this. Why is that? Well, because we've got another right triangle right here. The hypotenuse has to be longer than the leg. The hypotenuse is the longest side, so the leg has to be shorter. That's a good geometric way of thinking about it. But let's do something that gives us another way of calculating things. So, if rather than just having an orthogonal basis, we start with an orthonormal basis. I've really kind of mentioned this before, but orthonormal bases are just incredibly nice in terms of doing things. If we have that orthonormal basis to project the vector onto there, we don't need to do the division that we had before because all we were doing was dividing by the norm of the vector squared. And so if the norm of the vector is 1, all we're doing is dividing by 1. So all I need to do is dot the vector I'm looking for with each of the basis vectors and those give me my coefficients for those basis vectors. We'll go through one of those. But let's focus on the second part. Further, if we create a matrix out of making the columns those orthonormal basis vectors, we can compute the projection onto the subspace by doing u u transpose times y. So let's try both of those parts here. So let's say my orthonormal basis for a subspace is 1 over root 2, negative 1 over root 2, 0. That has norm 1 because if I square the whole thing, dot it with itself, I get 1 half plus 1 half plus 0. This one if I dot it with itself, I get 1 fourth plus 1 fourth plus 1 half is 1. So 
each of those things is normal, that each of those things has magnitude 1. And certainly if I dot these things together, I get a positive 1 over 2 root 2, minus 1 over 2 root 2, I'm going to get plus 0 is going to be 0. So let's say I want to project this vector y onto that subspace. All I need to do is dot my vector with my basis vectors. and take that times my basis vector. That dot product times 1 over root 2, negative 1 over root 2, 0. Plus, do the same thing with the other. I'm going to take 3, 2, 2, dotted with the 1 half, 1 half, 1 over root 2. And that's going to be my coefficient of the 1 half, 1 half, 1 over root 2. Sorry about running to the edge of the paper there. But working that out, so I'm going to get 3 over root 2 minus 2 over root 2. So I have 1 over root 2 times 1 over root 2, negative 1 over root 2, 0. Plus... 3 times a half plus 2 times a half is 5 halves. Plus root 2. 2 times 1 over root 2 is root 2. Times the vector 1 half, 1 half, 1 over root 2. This becomes 1 half negative one-half zero plus something pretty ugly to be honest we have five quarters plus root two over two which is the same as one over root two we get five quarters same thing plus root two over two and here we're going to get five over two root two plus 1. Okay, we can simplify that, add those, those vectors, do some stuff. I'm not going to worry about that. It doesn't simplify very nicely. But let's focus on the other part. Rather than doing it this way by a dot product, it said that another way to figure out the projection onto W of Y is to do u times u transpose times y. My matrix u is what I get by putting 1 over root 2, negative 1 over root 2, 0 is my first column. My 1 half, 1 half, 1 over root 2 is my second column. So u transpose is going to be 1 over root 2, negative 1 over root 2, 0, 1 half, 1 half, 1 over root 2. I then take that times my y vector. This video is getting kind of long and I'm not sure where it's worth going and doing the whole multiplication, but notice how this works. I start with a 3 by 2. This is then a 2 by 3, then a 3 by 1. All those dimensions line up, and so I'm going to end up with a 3 by 1 vector. And if you do all the calculations right, this multiplication should give you the same thing as this. The reason for that is, is that really this matrix multiplication like this is kind of just doing these things up here. Why? Because this part of it, this times this, is just the dot product of my basis vectors with this, 
that's giving me the linear combinations of the columns here, which is exactly what the previous formula did. It's just another way of looking at the same thing.